In this lesson, we will learn about a lot of different graphs, um, ways to display the data that we gather. Now, you won't be tested on all of these graphs, but you will need to um, accomplish some of them in your homework. So I'm going to go through um, different tutorials in this lesson that will show you how to do each type of graph. Now, one thing I want to point out is that there are video tutorials hyperlinked in this PowerPoint. But if this is the first time that you're viewing this PowerPoint, don't click on any of the hyperlinks for the video tutorials um, first. What you should do is just watch the whole video um, and then go back and watch each individual tutorial. So let's begin. What's important to know for this section is that even though there are a lot of different statistical graphs found in this section of your textbook, just focus on the types that are demonstrated. In the first type of graph that's presented is on page 60 in your textbook, and it's called a frequency polygon. A frequency polygon looks like a line graph. So here in this picture, you'll see a line graph. A line graph is used to show uh, the change that takes place over time. And you're basically connecting all of your data points in a straight line together. And the line could be increasing or decreasing or not. It could be going constant. You use line segments connected to points located directly above class midpoint values. Now here's a frequency polygon. What makes this different from a line graph is that a frequency polygon has to go back and touch the x-axis, so it creates a closed-in shape. Therefore, it's called a polygon. So it's very similar to how we construct a line graph, except the ending has to come all the way back down. So on the x-axis, we plot our midpoint values of each class. And then um, on the y-axis, we plot our frequencies or relative frequencies. Now on this page, uh, we're going to look at pulse rates. And uh, we're going to see a demonstration of how to construct a frequency polygon using this data. So if this is the first time you're watching this uh, slide, please go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, and then The second type of graph is an ogive graph. An ogive graph is found on page 61 in your textbook. Now an ogive graph also looks like a line graph. It uses line segments, and the, um, you're connecting the points directly above class boundaries. So it's different because you are graphing class boundaries on the x-axis, whereas in a frequency polygon, you were plotting class midpoint values. And on the y-axis, you are looking at cumulative frequencies. We're going to practice constructing an ogive graph of the data using pulse rates. Notice that uh, we have the cumulative frequency distribution table here because it's showing pulse rates less than 70, less than 80, and so on. Um, so if you click on this link, you will see a video to help uh, demonstrate how you would set up your own ogive graph. Um, again, if this is the first time you're watching this presentation, Next, we want to see about dot plots. A dot plot is really easy to construct. Um, you'll see a picture of one in your book on page 58. In a dot plot, each piece of data is plotted as a point along a scale of values. And so we actually just make a number line. Um, so you can go up by fives or tens, or you can go up by ones. And you plot each point above it. So However many five, if you have the number five in your data, you put a little dot above the number five. Um, so it's a number line, and you just stack the dots above it. So here we're looking at female pulse rates that were uh, collected. And this video tutorial will show you how to construct a dot plot using the fifth or the fourth type of statistical graph that we want to cover is a stem plot. This is also referred to as a stem and leaf plot. And here's a picture of what one would look like. Um, a stem and leaf plot always has a column on the left and a column on the right. 
The left side is called the stems and the right side is your leaf. You separate your data into two parts. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut your numbers after the first digit, draw a line, and the number to the left forms your stem, the number to the right is your leaf. When you do a stem and leaf plot, don't skip stem numbers even if you don't have any values for it in your data. So you'll notice that in this stem and leaf plot example, um, you have the num see the first one is 5 and then 1, that's the number 51. And then below it there's a 6 and there's nothing after it. So that means that we didn't have any values in the 60s. Uh, we also did not have any values in the 70s, but then it picks up again with 8. And so the way we would read the numbers after the 8 is it would be 84, 86, 88, and then the next one would be 92, 99. So notice how the stems go. They, pick, they start at 5 because that was our first data number was 51, and then it goes in sequential order, it doesn't skip any numbers, and it ends with the last um, stem at 151, which is 151. If you turn a stem plot sideways, you basically get a picture of a histogram, except you know all the values. Also, when we set this up, we need to repeat values if necessary. So, if we have the number 25 in our data 10 times, you actually will put 25 in your stem and leaf plot 10 times. And the way that looks is you would have the stem 2, and then you would have the number 5 after it 10 times to represent 10 25s. Here we're going to use the data of the female pulse rates once more, but we're going to set up a stem A Pareto chart is a bar graph that is used to graph qualitative data. So this is something that has a funny name, but we've all seen it before. Um, you'll see below that we have graphed data that corresponds to categories like generic versus manufactured label is the first bar, drug out of stock is the second, cannot read the order is the third. So you have categories um, listed for each bar. Notice the bars are not connected to each other. Um, also, the bars in a Pareto chart go in order from high to low. So that's one thing that you always have to do is you have to go in that order. The highest amount comes first. In this example, uh, on page 69, this is question 16, we want to construct a Pareto chart of the data. So on the next page, uh, we will see a video tutorial for this Pareto chart. And so click on the tutorial and it will help you set up the uh, example correctly. The last type of statistical graph I wanted to mention is a scatter plot. And we will do a lot more with scatter plots in chapter 10. Uh, but in this chapter, we just need to understand how to graph the points. It's basically plotting points on a regular X and Y graph. Each point on the graph represents a paired piece of data. However, we don't connect the dots, so we're just scattering the points in the quadrant uh, without connecting them. And on page 64 in your textbook, you'll see um, some great pictures of scatter plots.